I just um, would like to say that in terms of people using like light salt and um, you know salts, other salt substitutes, um, you know it presents a problem that I've found in certain communities for you know like if they're on the borderline of um, Reno problems, then they're taking in too much. We had a couple of cases like that. So how would you address that in terms of the potassium becoming too much when they're borderline? You know, I, I'm not an expert in this, so I don't want to say too much other than uh, certainly, yeah, people who have renal disease need to be careful about how much potassium they take in. And so there are probably recommendations about whether they should take in light salt at all. Uh, and I would defer to other people who know more about it. Uh, but just answering the general question, I don't think anybody thinks it's dangerous to be eating more fresh fruits and vegetables, which will give you a higher potassium load, lower sodium load, and be good in many other ways. Uh, Sandra, I know you need to leave soon of closing minute or so. Um, <laughs> closing minute, I wasn't expecting that. I, uh, I, I, I think this is a really fascinating discussion. I, I, um, I, I think there's a lot of, obviously there's room for hours long discussion on this. and. Uh, it strikes me, as we're talking here, that there is room for genuine public health debate and discussion around controversial issues that in some respects resembles legal discussions, where we truly delve into the topic and charge people with, with interrogating what we think we know. Remember, I called my talk, Why We Know What We Think We Know. And, uh, and I, I think um, given the challenges in elevating health as a value, given the challenges in animating society, towards the goal of improving population health, I think it's a, it is a higher standard to which we are held, and that is okay. I think at the end of the day, we shall prevail, but this kind of internal discussion strikes me as a sine qua non for us, of, of us making the right decision moving forward. I'm not, I really do not know what the right decision is on SALT, and I agree to be a part of this really for the discussion. And I'm really glad I did it, because it strikes me that this kind of discussion is, has taught me a lot. I hope that we have all gotten something out of it, but if, if, if more than anything else, it has given me a frame, to use the term, for the kind of discussions that we should be having internally in population health, population health scholarship as we move forward before we move into the outside world. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, if it's okay with you, we'll take one more round sure. of questions. Yes. Uh, You're on your own. That's right. <laughs> Good luck. Now I can say all kinds of things about Sandra. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. More questions. Hi. Uh, so my concern, and this is going back to the question about whether we address processed foods or sodium, um, is that I kind of hear this very similar, um, you know, going back to when it was low fat and when that was the craze and when we realized that it was more about the kind of fat we were eating and all of these processed food companies took out fat and added in other things. And, you know, Salt is what makes processed food taste so good, so in addition to the sugar and fat. So if we focus so much on sodium, and that's the, the, the evil here, and then the processed food companies still want their food to taste good, and then what do they do to their food to still keep it taste good, but technically we've reduced sodium intake. So how do we address the larger issue of just that these processed foods have generally unnatural things that aren't good for us if we keep addressing these singular, um, you know, nutrients. And, and also there's, say, people say that, um, you know, Himalayan salt and sea salt and all these other salts are better sources, and I'm not sure the actual scientific evidence behind that, but if people are salting their own food, but then they stop doing that because they think salt's bad for them. And so how to best address that without saying that all salt and all sodium is evil? So a few more, and uh, I think we'll take w whatever other hands are up, and then we'll uh, give Dr. Farley a final chance. There's a uh, Charles in the back. Thank you very much. I guess my, my overall question is, what is the consumer to do? Um, and, and I guess that's what I grapple with frequently is there's a lot of you know, debate going on um, amongst public, public health experts, but it, I think it translates to consumers that, well, this gives me a license to basically do whatever I want as opposed to following any guidelines. And that's my most you know, pressing concern. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, three, these last three hands up, and if you can keep the questions short, that would be great, or comments. 
Yes, I just um good after, um good morning. Um, I just wanted to know: Do you know if there are any policies currently being um, put on the table to address salt specifically, and what are they? There were some impressive statistics around Finland going back to 1970, and the biggest part of the campaign was labeling. So I wanted to know what would be the difference uh, relative to a U.S. society when you just have food labeling, and could we indeed uh, achieve any kind of reduction similar to that with just labeling? And I think we had one more over here. Uh, my question was a little bit similar to the one asked a little bit earlier, but um, if there was some sort of um, limitation put on salt, uh, who would be responsible for regulating that? Because uh, I feel like salt is just omnipresent in everything that we eat. Um, and what kind of penalty could you impose on those, you know, companies or restaurants, um, you know, that would really enforce such a, such a reduction? Okay, I'm going to try to do these, and I may have trouble remembering them all, but see what I can do. First, you had a very good question in the back about our messaging. Is this still on? How much of this should be, uh, you should eat less processed food versus an initiative to reduce the sodium levels in processed food? And I think it's probably a legitimate um, criticism that public health hasn't been strong enough on saying you should eat less processed food. We should do that. Um, because there's all kinds of health benefits from that. Um, but I don't think the conflict between that and saying, for the food that is processed, that we know that a lot of people are going to eat, that there are certain things in there which are, are at such dangerous level that the food industry ought to be putting in less of those. Uh, and, and I think we can say both of those at the same time. And that's what this debate is about. It's about, I think, the, it's about should we um, work with the food industry, either on a voluntary basis or through uh, a mandatory basis, to lower the sodium levels in processed food. Um, and, and I think we should. Um, the question about consumers is that it's mostly this is not about consumers, because consumers, for the most part, when they get processed food, uh, they just sort of grab what's on the shelf. Uh, and they are, uh, unfortunately, passively exposed to these things, which could be quite dangerous. If there are recommendations, it should be when you're getting processed food, read the labels and choose those labels that have less sodium. That's tough to do, though. Often there aren't that many options. It's very confusing to read those labels. Uh, but if there is a consumer message, that's what it is. Um, what Finland did, though, is different from what are on labels in the United States. Uh, here we have a bunch of numbers on a table, hard to read. They actually had a warning sign that said, this product has so much sodium, it's dangerous for you to eat. Um, <laughs> and as you might imagine, food companies said, I don't really want that label on my food. And so they reformulated their food products so that they didn't have that warning sign. Um, I think that's a legitimate uh, policy for us to dis consider in this country, uh, for certain foods to have a warning label on them. Uh, now, what we are doing uh, in this country right now, uh, for those who asked about that, is the National Salt Reduction Initiative is a, uh, it's a national coordinated voluntary plan working with uh, as much of the food industry as willing to work with us on this to reduce the sodium levels across, uh, in the most important categories across all of their products. Um, and sodium levels are so high that they could probably reduce them by about 20, 25% and nobody would notice um, and, uh, and we would all benefit from that. Uh, and if we do it gradually, the, uh, in particular, our, our taste would notice it because people's, your, your preference for salt depends on how much salt you take in. Uh, so I think that, uh, I feel very passionate that's an important project. It's, it's showing signs of success. We need to do more of it. There may be a role uh, as well for warning signs. There may be a role for the FDA at the federal level to regulate certain uh, salt levels that are, are extraordinarily high. Uh, but I think that we could do an awful lot um, actually, in this case, working with the food industry, but in a, in a coordinated way where they understand the risks of not participating uh, to reduce the, the current sodium levels. Great. Thank you so much for doing okay. this. Thank you Thank all you. for your great questions.